We can start here with case number six, and Jan will give the case history. Jan, please go ahead. Yes, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our first case today is an 85-year-old female with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation since 2013. Currently, she suffers from exertional dyspnea Nua Stadium 2. Her past medical history includes coronary artery disease with a cabbage in 1998, peripheral artery disease with several PTAs, carotid and arterectomy in 1999, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and presyncope. Her chest rest score is 6, her shed score is 2, and her health blood score is 2. Her ECG shows a sinus rhythm with a heart rate of 70 beats per minute. Her Holter ECG showed intermittent atrial fibrillation with a mean heart rate of 94 beats per minute. TTE examination revealed a left ventricular ejection fraction of 65%, mild LA dilatation and mild tricuspid regurgitation. Thank you and back to Professor Siever, please. Thank you very much. So regarding the indication, this patient would probably fit into the protect AF trial uh, because she does not have a formal contraindication against anticoagulation. But oh, as we discussed I'm yesterday, uh, uh, I believe that this is an alternative to anticoagulation, LA closure, and not just for those patients who cannot take it. Uh, we just introduced the uh, TE probe. Laura is doing the echo. And Laura, can you give us the first thing we look for when we do LAA closure is to look for thrombi in the left atrial appendage because if there's anything in there, then we should certainly stop. So, uh, Laura, can you show us what you see on echo there? So, yeah. I am now live at 135 degree, and um, I just discovered um, um, our appendage is multilobal, at least it has two lobes, and um, on the left is 135, and on the right is uh, something about uh, uh, zero degree. And the big concern, what we are uh, discussing now, uh, let me show you. So it is this structure here. So, what is that? Is that a thrombus or it is just muscle? Ask the audience. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, let's see if we can ask Oliver what that structure is. Now, Oliver, press the button in front of you. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure what we're talking about. Oh. Oh. Uh, about that, <laughs> Oliver, good morning. No, that. <laughs> yeah. Oliver, Oliver is awake and outside sure. Europe. The measures from here to Oliver, is no, this a sure thrombus or is it something yeah. else? There are two lobes. Here and then. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's 13, okay. Kevin, help. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, examine maybe multiple views. It, it's slightly suspicious. It, it, it yeah, it is suspicious. Slightly uh, suspicious. Okay. Only slightly. <laughs> All right, uh, John, John Carroll, where are you? Yep, what do you think this is? You were on your computer, not concentrating. Praying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, press the button on the microphone if there's one in front. Yep. We're trying to work out whether this is thrombus in those one of the two lobes. Well, maybe. So maybe it is not. Yeah. It, it, it's not mobile, so that's that's yeah. one thing. Uh, typically, what we would do is uh, 3D acquisition and then, then do MIPS through it, such that you could uh, potentially distinguish it from uh, just part of the wall versus a true intraluminal defect. That'd be one approach. Um, occasionally, giving contrast uh, uh, may help uh, delineate. It, uh, it is clearly problematic. But that would, that would be my approach, yeah. the 3D yeah. with MIPS. Yeah, okay. Let me just um, complete the uh, prescribing here is the 155. It means uh, uh, this position is our posterior lobe, and behind it, it is um, anterior lobe, if we assume it is not a um, thrombus. And yeah. as Zee? you yeah, can ahead. see, this, the structure moves just up and down. Simultaneous Laura. with the with the heart beating, and it, it doesn't have this fluttering uh, movement. Sure. Okay. That's La why Laura. we think it is um, is a how to say a muscle sure. And uh, I will show you the. Um, Laura, 
Yeah. I've got Z and Neil yeah. wanting to comment. I think, you know, the best thing is to compare with the previous TEE Echo if you have one. No. No. <laughs> This is the first T. Yeah. yeah, this is the first T, but the lady was in uh, Xarelto until uh, 48 hours. Um, so, John, it's for you this uh, 3D picture. So and I would say for me, it is just muscle uh, dividing in two lobes. Okay. On this side, it is anterior lobe, and here Laura. is the Got posterior Neil, uh, lobe. Neil wanting to comment. Neil? Well, yeah, in some ways, in my opinion, doesn't particularly matter, but this brings up a uh, fantastically important and useful educational point because here we have a room full of experts in left atrial appendage closure and indeed imaging, and we're still not 100% sure, so it's maybe reassuring for those who be only done a few left atrial appendage closures or who are starting that process, you will come up against this this question and you see we don't have an easy answer for you so you don't feel bad about it when you go to your lab next week and try and do a case absolutely Should we true. Vote? Ask, ask the audience or the experts whatever you want yeah. how they would proceed because the question is it clot or not seems to be difficult to answer but what I, to do now what okay. is the next step so i would proceed but remember an x is a has been and a spurt is a drip under pressure so Neil, you're too close to the microphone, so there's a lot of noise coming so out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I can't see. Gus, is it? Yeah. Okay, Gus. Gus, Gus Bichard. So, one more question. Is a patient been anticoagulated before? Yes, yes. it was. Yes. Sareto. So, that makes it's a difference. It's saban. If the patient's been adequately anticoagulated, even yeah. if it is thrombus, it should be adhered, it should not be fresh. It's unlikely to be displaced. So that would favor, in that case, to do the case now. Okay. Well, so the, the, problem, the problem is she's uh, prescribed Xarelto. As you know, nobody can 100% guarantee that she always take it. Mm. Okay, so uh, what we want to know is whether a host should proceed now with device uh, or not. Neil, what? Proceed, proceed. Proceed. Uh, uh, any others? Show of hands, those, oh, Bharat? I would be of the opinion that uh, you, could, uh, you could put the patient on anticoagulation, confirm that she is compliant with it, bring back the patient after maybe two or four weeks, and then yeah, decide, because if it is truly a thrombus and if you manage to dislodge, it okay. could be catastrophic. Kevin? It, it may be one of those cases where you don't do an angiogram in the appendage, and instead you open the ball in the, say, whichever device you're using, you open the okay, ball of the device the yeah. in the pulmonary vein and then come in directly. So that, you, so that you're not stirring up anything distally with either wire or, or angiographic dye. Okay, so you would have the device in the pulmonary vein, pull it back and into the appendage. Yeah, and just that the, way. yeah, because the ball is usually a pretty safe instrument okay. in which to in, in which All to right. cannulate the appendage. Show of hands, those who would proceed with uh, appendage closure here, <clears throat> and those who would not, and do what Barrett said. So the majority looks as is not clear. quite like Brexit, but the majority are in favour of uh, proceeding. Oh, there's a comment. Uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Hara from Tokyo. Oh, so, yeah. it, uh, if you, you can use the no, ice yeah. catheter yeah, like yeah, yeah, uh, St. Yeah. Jude View Flex yeah. into the LA, from the LA, uh, the um, resolution is better, so you can uh, uh, confirm what it is. Okay, so ice catheter to try and resolve the question. But what should uh, the ice catheter show us? Uh, should it be different to uh, what we see now? Well, it should show the same picture, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so which device? Have Sing Jun? No, Sing Jun. Okay, so host, first yeah, question, yeah. are, you, are you going to proceed? Yeah. Yes, Okay. We will. All right, now the next question is which device? So uh, before we go into the sizes, any suggestions of the type of device here, Oliver? Very quickly. This one. Um, I, I would probably do what Kevin was suggesting and use a use a St. Jude device, St. Jude but, device. Uh, but not poke too much down the bottom of the appendage. Okay, so John, Carol? Well, of course, we have a rather limited perspective only having the watchman available, but I, I did have some experience with the uh, St. Jude amulet device, and I think that's very easy to use, and, uh, and I think... Uh, 
here in this situation with slight uncertainty of what's in the left atrial appendage, it would be nice to just have a very straightforward, quick mm -hmm. procedure mm -hmm. and uh, three close three off the left uh, atrial feet, os. Uh, two. Okay, Z. Well, I think you know any device should should work here. And uh, as John said, you don't want to manipulate anything. You want a quick procedure, because I'm I'm not sure, but there is high probability that this is a thrombus that may get dislodged. Uh, so, I, I do have a general comment or question. Is uh, there any, uh, I mean, help in using uh, embolic protection devices in that kind of situation? Try to use that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Horst, did you hear that one about uh, embolic protection? It's a good idea. We don't have one available, but that's something we discussed here. So, so uh, we don't have it in the lab. Hey, so Hiko, what would you use uh, when closing this? Hara? Yeah. Dr. Hara, where are you? Yes, I am here. Uh, what device? Oh, yes. Uh, it seems uh, that YY is here, so I, I think uh, um, Lumbre is a very good one. Okay, I Lumbre. Think. Okay, so uh, Horst, what would you? What are you planning to do? Okay, actually, uh, Dr. Lam will do this case, and uh, he obviously has a preference, or may have a preference for the Lambre device. But I think it's a good choice here because, with the Lambre device, and he will explain this when he is doing the case, you don't have to go deeply into the appendage uh, as you would have to do with the Watchman, for example. Yeah. Uh, but he is now doing the transeptal, and we should. Uh, uh, watch this. So the sheath is in the S and SL1 sheath, right? Yeah. It's in the superior vena cava. And uh, Laura, we need long axis yeah, and short axis. Yeah, yeah. Wait, something okay. here. I think I have to be uh, fair. I think uh, for this case, um, if you worry that that's really a thrombus, uh, that's exactly sitting at the anterior lobe. And so uh, for watchman procedure, you really have to position the sheath deep in that lobe then will be a bit of concern. I think I would be happy with any this type of device like Amulet, Lambrea, which you can actually open uh, the, the lobe or the umbrella outside the appendage and then you gradually push in. That I would be more comfortable. So not necessarily Lambrea, but Lambrea is, is an option. Yeah. Uh, Host, you've got a wide experience of different devices. Uh, what about the Oclitec one? Have you in this with situation. The, uh, yeah, with the Oclitec, you also yeah. have to go some way into the appendage. So uh, it may still work, but it would not be my first choice here. A device like Lambre or ACP or Amulet, I think, has the advantage, as Kevin mentioned. Okay. Look at the puncture side. So you are puncturing inferiorly and posteriorly. Is yeah. that what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, about the site. I'm going through it now. Yeah, I think I'm okay. through. Yeah. yeah, you are. Okay. And we also have LA pressure. Is, you see is, that on the uh, screen? Sh Shustov Bartek here, Christoph. Okay. No, he's not. Um, well, this, the sound chart also requires, the Lariat system also requires that you go deeply into the appendage. That would also not be ideal. Okay. If, you, if you think you it's thrombus. pointing to a... Yeah. yeah. It's okay. I'm, I'm in the... Uh, yeah. Dilators. Yeah, you are not in yeah. the LAE, you want to but. Put the dilators out as well. Yeah, what I would we prefer to put a wire in. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, slightly uh, different heparin from. At this point? Yeah, we should give heparin, heparin first. Here. Uh, how, how's the weight of this patient? Uh, we usually give 10,000. Okay. So I give 10,000 heparin in this case. I think in this case, I would try my very best to avoid packing a stiff wire in the uh, appendage because. Uh, by doing that, you might have a small chance of uh, dislodging that so-called thrombus. So that's why I would like to bring a wire to the pulmonary vein for exchange. Uh, okay, cannot, so which? We cannot do that. That's 3-5 wire. The 3-5? Okay. Only uh, okay. accommodate 3-5. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to exchange it. So this one. So, uh, what kind of sheath for the device would you like to have? Um, double curve or single curve? I think I would take the double curve. Double curve. Yeah. So in this case, I would try to use the echo. Um, it's very difficult to get the J wire into the catheter, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, because you yeah. see, my finger is too too fake. Huh? Yeah. I think horse can definitely do that. I cannot. No. <laughs> <laughs> Even Horst is struggling with that, but no, yeah. he's managed it. Yeah. 
So to bring this wire to the pulmonary vein, uh, you need to, uh, I would advance uh, the wire out first a little bit. Oh, you are advancing in the... Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, then I would do a clockwise rotation. Okay. You see it points posterior and then I goes to the pulmonary vein. That's the technique that you avoid uh, actually putting the wire uh, in the appendage. Okay, and, and then okay. whilst you're doing that, what size sheath uh, are you looking at and th then thinking of what size device after that? Uh, since we are thinking about the LifeTech device, um, the largest sheath they require is 10, 10 French. I think I, I normally would go for 10 French because I don't want to change the sheath. Uh, I mean, uh, at some time during the procedure if the sizing is not right. So I need the stiff wire. Yeah, this can pull out. So uh, it's interesting, he had the uh, dilator still in the transeptal, then he exchanged yeah, that's for, a, for old 32 wire, and now he's retrieving the transeptal. Yeah, that's the problem of uh, Singju sheath, because uh, if you use that wire, goes with the sheath, it's only uh, shorter. It's, it's not as long as the normal stiff wire that we have, so it's not long enough sometimes for exchange. So what we do, we just remove the dilator and then uh, use the amplitude extra stiff from the beginning. Oh yeah, that's yeah. also another way. That's yeah. good yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, show again the curve of the uh, sheath uh, which comes with the device. I showed it on the screen but didn't okay. explain. So you see this, uh, the delivery uh, sheath of this system. So it has two curves. One is here, the proximal show, show portion. There. There. You see yeah. on the screen what, what's... Proximal portion is here, 45 <coughs> degree. That's uh, used for you to go through the septum and then there's a curve to go to the appendage. And then there's also small distal curve here. It's, the angle is less uh, as compared with the, uh, uh, the amulet sheath. This is only around 20, 30 degree. It's not as uh, uh, curved as in uh, amulet system. Okay. And it's 10 French, right? And it's 10 French. Mm -hmm. And so we have to put the dilator in here. So I think it's good to go with just a uh, 10 French sheep. Because sometimes you never know, you might need to change the device size. Then you, you don't have to change the sheep during the procedure. So that means it comes also with a 9 French for the smaller device? Yes, correct. Um, if you go for 16 or 18 <coughs> device, that smallest one, you can actually go with an uh, 8 French sheep. Uh, so, uh, why, why? This At this stage, do you have any idea, apart from Lambre, what size device you'd be thinking about, or have you got to do some more measurements? Well, uh, I look at the echo uh, before the procedure, and it seems to me the measurement is around 14 in the landing zone, right? Right, I can, can show you. Can we do you. the uh, yeah, I can show measurement you. again? So, I show you the uh, 3D construction, and as you can see here, this is... Uh, well, wait a moment. You know, I normally, our, okay, yeah. I, our uh, 60 degree and one for the five degree, and um, I measured uh, and I the first time here somewhere, um, a bit um, um, on the top of uh, landing zone, and it was 70 uh, over device. 16 millimeters. Yeah, just put it and the Dr. Lam uh, wanted to get a measurement a bit deeper, yeah. and it was somewhere here, yeah. and it is only. 50.5 over 9.4 millimeters. It's 15? 15. 15, uh, 15 yes. Yeah, roughly 15. Yeah, and um, um, here we can see that the, to this muscle, pectinous muscle, the distance is only uh, approximately 5, 6 millimeters. Yes. Could you please put the blue plane on the muscle part uh, on the 3D echo just to see if there are two holes? What? Sorry, I didn't understand. Say that again. If you could put the blue, move back plane, a bit. blue plane on the uh, structure in the apex of the... Uh, uh, well, the plane, the cutting plane, you mean, yes, yeah? Yes, exactly. Okay. Which device size? I couldn't um, I think we need to go for a special type mm -hmm. because I think the orifice is actually quite big. Mm -hmm. So if we go for, let's say, it measures 15, we choose for uh, 18. 
then mm -hmm. it would be 24, the, the, the this. So if we go for a special type, then the this would be larger. It would be around 32. Yeah, that would be nice. So why, I why? I have to, hi. Is there a minimum distance uh, of space needed before you say there's not enough room for us to deploy a well, device? I think six millimeter would be enough. And also, for this device, it's very important if you have pectinate muscles in the appendage. So not just the, 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 the shallow, because sometimes if it is very shallow, uh, it's difficult. But if you have pectinate muscles, when this device roll out, it will get caught in the pectinate muscles, then it will be very stable. Okay. And in this particular case, I think uh, uh, I would try to not to do a LA angiogram because if this is thrombus, then when I do the angiogram, it will just flush out the flush out the thrombus. So what I normally do is I do an injection, uh, pointing the delivery catheter to the roof of the atrium, and then when it flush back, I can roughly know where is the ostium of the appendage. That can be used as my roadmap. Okay. Uh, what injection speed do we want to have for the... Yeah, we'll just do an injection uh, in the roof. Uh -huh. yeah. How much contrast and what... I think around 10 mil will be fine. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Now I'm still in the pulmonary vein, so I pull, pull out the whole system. Advance the sheath. Okay. Yeah. What is the distance between the two markers? Uh, the distance between two markers is 10 millimeters. Sometimes if you want to use calibration, you can use this also as uh, uh, the reference. Inner side to inner side? Yeah, or inner side to inner side. Does the sheath have side holes? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. So why, why? Yes. In this case, you're obviously going to uh, use a device without any left atrial just... appendage angiograms. Uh, no, because yeah. we have excellent echoes here, so we don't need that. Yeah, that was in my, this particular case. My, my question but was: if you don't have why echo, do you need to do angiograms in that case? Um, sometimes uh, you really need to know where the ostium of the appendage is. In this particular case, if you look at the echo, the pulmonary vein ridge is very long, and um, you know there's a one stage that you have to manipulate this catheter into the appendage. Um, it would be nice if you have some. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. When we are doing microclip, we do this all the time. But um, just, just showing you that a way that you can also get some roadmap without direct injection into the appendage. Which uh, projection would you like to have? Maybe Ayo Kodo. Okay. I have a question about injection. Should you go for a hand injection that could be more, I mean, soft rather yep. than machine injection? Well, it doesn't matter. I just <laughs> try to, you see now I'm trying to pointing it uh, more towards the roof. Yeah, can we just do an injection here maybe? Test injection first. Okay, test injection. Which? Uh, about five, uh, we are still in the pulmonary vein. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, are in, you are now, now we drop. behind. So I try to yeah. turn it to the roof. Okay, let's do a uh, cine here. Okay, cine. So you see roughly, I know the uh, appendage. So I'm not directly inject into the appendage, but this is, um, um, well still it, it shows you some, mm -hmm. some pictures here. I think it would be nice if I can pull back this sheet more, then it would be nicer. Uh, this is not a very good demonstration. Like if I can pull back it here, and then I just give uh, maybe just four to few, four to five mil contrast, it would be nice. Mm -hmm. John? Yeah. Question Just of give a little bit fresh here, like. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could yeah, we that's, say that's a, what I want. A left I atrial mean, pressure here before and after? I can have a room map where the appendage so, or uh, Why, why? Yeah. I've got a question or comment uh, from uh, uh, John Carroll. John, go ahead. I was wondering if we could see left atrial pressure waveform before and after, because one of the striking observations is that when you put these relatively stiff devices in, you acutely change left atrial uh, compliance, and V waves often get more prominent. Okay. It's so let's show them the echo, you, please. Yeah. Uh, not the echo, the pressure. The pressure now is before. No pressure. The mean pressure is about 12 to 14. Okay. Okay. So keep this in mind, Karun, huh? Yeah. So we will do that uh, after we deploy a device. 
Okay, so, so now we can. We might yeah, have we to move show, you on a little bit. Yeah, we can show them the device. Uh, this is uh, not a standard device that we use normally. Uh, if you look closer here, this is actually a special device design. The umbrella, which is the distal part of this device, is 18 millimeter, and this is much larger. It's about uh, 14 millimeter larger, so it's 32. Uh, normally, if we choose a standard device, uh, the diameter of the disc will be only six millimeter larger. But judge from the echo, we know that this patient has very small distal lobes, but the opening is very wide. So that's why I choose a special type of device. I think will be better cover the orifice of this patient. Okay, so in this case, you relied purely on TOE, or are you doing some measurements on the angio as well? Uh, I just rely on TOE. Okay, because so I don't want to do the angio, angio. Uh, so you're not, uh, how much oversizing have you uh, done compared with the TOE measurements? Uh, normally you need around 20, uh, 20 to 25%. Uh, it's roughly about uh, four to five millimeter larger than the landing zone. Yep, and in this case, uh, the landing zone was it's seven? It's about 15. 15. It's about 15, so that's why I choose the umbrella that's 18. Yeah. But uh, because the opening is so large, so that's why I choose a special type of device, which uh, the diameter of the opening is uh, very big. So Would you now like hooks, to explain uh, the different hooks of this device? Yeah, uh, this device actually has two hooks system. Um, maybe we can zoom into the device. Yeah, you see the distal part, this part, they, these are big hooks. It's like the frames of the umbrella that you have. And then on the shoulders, on the shoulders of this umbrella, you see very small hooks that helps you engage into the appendage wall. So there, there are two stabilizing. So from this zooming picture, you see very well. So let's see if I can point that. So this is the uh, small hooks for engaging into the appendage wall. And then uh, beneath, these are the bigger hooks. Uh, when uh, maybe horse try to recapture the device more. So you see it shows up these bigger hooks better. Um, this will help you engage into the pectinate muscle. So that's why when choosing a, a device like that, sometimes uh, if we have a very big appendage, we don't really need to choose a very oversized device if there are a lot of pectinate muscles because these bigger hooks, once it gets trapped in the pectinate muscles, then the device will be very stable. I think this is the key difference between this device and also uh, uh, an, an amulet. So just stay on that picture now. If you uh, stop there, yeah. or just before that, how many millimeters is that protruding now? I'm just trying to work out with this appendage with the possible thrombus. As you de start okay. deploying, does it curl Syringe? up straight away or does it, yeah. Yeah. So horse try to deploy the device. So it will roll out. Okay. These hooks will roll out, and the membrane will also be uh, released. All yep. right. And the umbrella will be uh, uh, opened fully. And then when you uh, keep on uh, unsheathing, then the cover will come up as well, like this. Mm -hmm. And then when, when you are not happy about the position, you try to do the recapture, you just pull on the cable. And you see how these hooks behave. It will be like uh, the umbrella is wrapping, wrapping, and then uh, all the hooks will be pointing upwards, and there will not be any damage to the hook structures. Okay. So that's why you can recapture it many times if you want. Okay, good. Thank you. That's nice. Keep going now. Okay. So let's put this inside. So it is important to have a continuous flush on this uh, delivery system. Yes. Um, may I tell you that your, your sheet is somewhere... Close? No, no. it's not close. It's so far ah, away, it's but far, not in the pulmonar uh, vein. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay? Yeah, it's I deliberately do that because I don't want to ah, point, okay. point at the opening of the yeah. appendage. So now I try to uh, push this device. Can you pull up the roadmap of the angel just we have? Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can just 
Okay, thank you. Okay. Still cannot see the device. Uh, no. No. Mm. Okay, it's about to come out, I think. I do a scene here. No, not yet. No. Okay. Okay, is it come out? Not yet? Not yet. Okay. It's hard to see, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's here, huh? You are just a few millimeters in the LA. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, with the tip of the sheet, that we know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's I where know. we want to be. So we the see device. the hub of the device. So, it's so now you see now. the connecting dots. There's a radio opaque mark uh, at the left lower corner. Uh, that's actually connecting the umbrella and uh, this. And you see there's uh, some uh, cluster of dots at the tip. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually the, the most distal part of the device. Now I will try to advance this cluster towards this distal marker here. Just and then using that as the road map, I would just turn the sheath a little bit so it would point towards the appendage wall. So we're turning clockwise, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It comes down and then I will open it partially I would do a Sydney so you see I open it partially here. Let, let's look at 3D where we are oh, now. Super. Okay. Can we see the echo? Yeah, you can see that. Should so I it's not fully open the umbrella, just partially open it. Very nice. You see the echo images as well? Show us 2D so yeah. we can understand the anatomy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah to guide the procedure, it's yeah. better to yeah. do it after 2D. Huh? 3D is too complex for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, free, 3D fashion. is for aliens. Huh? We, are, we, are Earth. Oh, we are from Earth. The real okay. world is in 2D, okay. as you know. Okay. <laughs> so now I can uh, gradually uh, advance this towards the appendage wall. So you see from the echo. Uh, I'm actually at the ostium of the Make we the see appendage. the echo, please, yeah. Yeah, can you see the echo on live? Yeah. So sure. I'm actually on the uh, uh, opening. So now I'm trying to deli deliver the, Wait, the umbrella. Look at the echo. Don't you think you have to rotate yeah, counterclockwise a little bit? I have to, yeah. I have to. That's why echo is very important. Yeah. Now I counterclockwise a little bit, so it goes a bit upward. Uh, if we could show Echo again Sorry. and Floro. Yeah. Thank you. So Sorry. I haven't pushed it yet mm. because I tried to retrieve a little bit of the device to make it smaller, the umbrella. Yeah, so it goes in, in now. I in, yeah. turn counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And then this is where the landing zone is. So I will show you how I deploy in Sydney. So I would deploy the umbrella fully here. Okay. And then it will also cover the thrombus. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now the next step is very easy. So I have to unsheath to bring out the big cover. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I bring out the cover. Okay. So you see why I'm choosing a bigger cover because you can see that after I deploy the cover, uh, the os ostium is very big. Yep. So now it just uh, seems to me that the, the disc is just able to cover the ostium. So what's happened from to the, the thrombus, Laura? Vein, from the yeah, pulmonary vein ridge to the uh, mitral valve. We push it down and covered it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so it was a thrombus after all that. Yeah. Was it a thrombus? <laughs> in, in fact, I don't think it was a thrombus. Come uh. on. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I think uh, all of us would say no to do this procedure, right? Can Let's you, do an angiogram. Can you put color on? Yeah. Let's do angiogram. I have to unsheath a little bit. Okay. Yep. Just give you some rooms for angiogram mm -hmm. injection. How do you ensure that all the hooks are uh, caught? Okay, that's a good question. We can do a tech test. Uh -huh. So this is what, after we deployed it, <coughs> I think it looks nice from angiogram. Laura, what do you think on color? Yeah, but the color, I didn't see um, any jet going uh, Behind, yeah, it looks really good. 
Could we okay. see the Anjo in the big screen, please? Yeah. Okay. Can we zoom? 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 Oh, oh Anjo. Yeah, no. Okay. So your um, hooks sort of superiorly, uh, yeah. are they caught or uh, are you going to do the tug to see? Yeah, I can do a tug test live. So you don't have to look for compression of the device? No, you right? don't it's have to look for compression. Uh, but of course, the umbrella will look a little bit rectangular mm -hmm. instead of light spreading out uh, of the cloth. That's already a sign that it has some compression. Okay. So mm -hmm. we so might have really to move you a little bit, uh, YY. So uh, can you do the tug for us? Sure. You want uh, how aggressive I do the tug test? Well, not too aggressive, please. Huh? <laughs> okay. There's, there's I show there. you the YY way, huh? Okay, that's quite aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, not very, but yeah, okay. Oh. Not very, okay. <laughs> Don't do more. Uh, okay. <laughs> What's very aggressive? Why, why? I might have to speed you up a little bit because I think I'm going to be deported and I have to get a visa to come back. Okay. So I just deploy the device. You happy? Yeah. Okay. To deploy the device, uh, it's always good to advance the sheath. Because sometimes when you deploy, um, the cable might get caught. So I do it like this. So you apply a little bit of tension yep. while you're deploying? Yes, correct. So OK. Great. OK. Mm -hmm. So I deploy the device. Final angiogram? Yeah. Cine? Yeah, Cine. Keep the Yeah, I screw it. OK. OK. Perfect. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why, why? That's that's a good case, that eh? looks excellent. Oh. Any last uh, final comments from you before we go to Vietnam? Check. Yeah, uh, Neil. Pressure, pressure. Oh, John. Show me the pressure. Oh, left atrial pressure. Oh, hang on, hold on. So in the majority of people after life atrial occlusion, the V-wave becomes more prominent because Can we go back to Frankfurt you've made the very chamber, quickly. you've taken away the most compliant and a fairly large volume from the chamber.